Can't hear you. Okay, go. Okay, yeah, my picture again. So. Can you hear me? Yep, Mr. Kalafi. Yeah. I hear. I can't hear you. Oh, you can hear me? Okay, because I took off my headset. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, How? So I'm speaking Shall we my start? Camera. First, you are going to ask, or I can speak. Yes. Is it loud enough? Okay. Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. okay. Can you can you continue to? No, it's okay. All right. Okay. So have you introduced me? Can you? We shall continue. Can you continue to okay. Um, yeah, it's okay. Right, so I'm really happy to be here. Thank you, Faria, uh, for arranging this. We and shall continue. Names. Uh, it's really a pleasure to feel like yeah. I'm in Turkey, especially since I have a special love for Turkey. Uh, my husband was there for three years, so um, I was always hearing about Turkey. So we're going to be talking about the Y generation in the digital age. I'll try to speak as slowly as I can. I hope you can hear me. I took away my camera. Do you want me to stop for translation? Every time I speak. No. No. No, no. You don't need this. Everything is okay. All right. So um, that's great. All right. So a little bit about. No, no. What the Y Everything generation is okay. means. Before we can start talking about the Y generation. This is a chart of the generations. So there are more generations before the baby boomers. But because the baby boomers are the ones at the workplace and they're the ones that are having problems with the Y generation, I just want you to take a look at the dates. The baby boomers were from 1940 to 1960. The X generation 
which is the generation before the Y generation, is up to 1980. So you can think of yourself. Where are you? Are you an X generation or Y generation? The Z generation are the generations to come, but we're not going to be talking about them today. So let's take a look at some statistics. Well, as you can see from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and I'm talking about North America. I'm not talking about the world, but since North America has a huge influence on the workforce around the globe, uh, just for your information, in the United States, by 2020, 50% of the workforce will be the Y generation. In 2025, or by 2025, it'll be 75%. That's a huge jump. And in Canada, sorry, I left out the A. Is it okay? Yeah, right now. By 2028. It's going to be 75% in Canada. So you can see that Canada is a bit behind, but yeah, not much. Right so why is this important? Why is it important for us to take a look at the Y generation in the digital age, which is right now? Well, first of all, there is a great deal of help needed. As Ryan Gibson says, he can help you keep your Y generation because the Y generation and you'll learn in a minute are not going to stay on the job. So if you want to keep your Y generation and you're an X generation or baby boomers, you better change your attitude because if companies do not change their attitude to the Y generation, they're going to have no one who's going to stay on the job. So what are some of these attitudes at work that the Y generation has? First of all, and this may be a surprise to older people, they are passionate. Yes, they care. They're passionate and they're driven. They are very, very motivated to make a difference in the world. And you can see this by the revolutions around the globe where youngsters, the Y generation, are very, very caring youngsters who don't want to sit back and let things happen. They care about the world. And they're confident. And this is something different from previous generations. The Y generation or the millennium generation are confident about their leadership. They know they can be leaders on the job and that's what they do. They take leadership roles and they're confident in making it big and up the ladder before the age of 35. In other words, they know they're going to succeed. They have no doubt. They are very confident in their plans for the future. Now here's some trends at work. First of all, forget about nine to five jobs for the Y generation. They don't want to stay in the office and dry up. They want to go out and they want to freelance. They want to work in teams. They don't want to work alone in the old way. They want to use technology for digital communication. And they are, and remember this because it's really, really important. They are high performers. They want to do the best job that they can. Now, the fact that they are community oriented they care about people outside the workforce. And this is really important because if you want to be part of the Y generation and you're younger or older, you need to keep this in mind. 70% of the Y generation are giving back to the community. And the statistics was taken from Lee Yushanin in the Meet Millennials, which is a Canadian journal. 
a little more about the Y generation and or the millennials at work. A little statistics, 60% are leaving their jobs within three years. And if you're an employer, you have to think of, well, how am I going to keep them? Well, you have to keep them happy. 60% are leaving. 45% of the millennials or the Y generation will choose a workplace flexibility. In other words, they care more about working flexible hours in flexible ways, which is their way, over the pay, the money. Money is not as important to them as to feel good on the job. Now, this is really important. Feeling good, remember, these are very caring individuals. 72% want to have a job where they can make an influence. Okay, they don't want to just do anything. And these, of course, are either professionals or non-professionals. But it's the Y generation attitude to work in general. And uh, here is what a Y generation cubicle may look like. These guys, some of them may dress up for the part. Okay, this one has his tie in place. This one has a loose tie. And this guy is working out. In other words, the workplace has to suit their needs. It may need to be a mess. It may need to have whatever they need, whether it's working out, moving around, walking in and out. But they have to have it their way or they'll leave. So if you're thinking of um, getting Y generation at your workplace, you have to ask them what they want and cater to their needs. And if you take a look, this was taken from the Canadian Financial Post. I have been talking about, as I said at the beginning, North America and the statistics and the way things are in North America. And I'm wondering what it's like in your country. And if you feel that some of these trends apply to you, if you're a Y generation, or to people that you know who are the Y generation. So if there are any questions, I'd love to answer them. Now there's an audio. Oh, is it? Well, I could put back my headset. I don't know why, um, if that helps. Yes. Nail, everything is, I think, is clear. I am gonna. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Nate, everything is gonna be clear. I am gonna translate some key points. Uh, um, I am gonna uh, give some questions, uh, some answers from one question. Question then for you. Uh, Economic. They are asking um, what you think about. He means <laughs> Okay. They, uh, they are asking, can you hear me? No. Asking in the U.S. and uh, um, how the economical differences affect the attitudes of the generation here. Why? Uh, can you give us some reflection on this? Economical differences. The, the impact of economical differences on the attitudes. The Oh. Hmm. Do you think that these, uh, yes, but do you think that uh, these kind of attributes uh, belonging to the dollar issue or economical crisis, the outcome of it, outcome of this, uh, I, is it, am I right? Gençler arasında ekonomik bir farklılıklar varsa onların şimdi ama ekonomik anlayamadım soru cevap gitmeyelim daha büyük bir cevap verdi Evet. Ama şey Kanada'yı da çok etkiledi aslında. Ona e, değinmemeye çalıştı. Kanada'yı ile geçerseniz şey. Şimdi kapatalım da öyle. Amerikan toplumlarında önemli. Şimdi diğer konuşmacılar hepsi bu geri gelen aslında bir de şükür etti. Çok fazla yani arkadaşlar konuşmacı arkadaşlar hepsi de ben çok istiyorum. Burada bulgulandı. Yani bir de şükür yani bu bir Amerikan Kanada Partisi'nde olur yoksa kendilerini ilgilenen olarak görüyorlar yani. Yani çoğu zaman bir şey yapılıyor. Bu bunun şey yapılmış mı? Ben bir şey yapılmış mı?
Anlıyor diyor Kürtçe bizi. Lider şifre soru yolluk oluyor. Sen cevap verecek. Lider olma rollerinin artı olduğunu savundu neyin? Bunu neden savundun, neden düşündüğünü mü soralım hocam? Ne, ne diyelim? Neden? <gülüyor> Evet, ben liderlik yapabilirim, benim için de zaten bu var aslında. Bu toplumda bu biraz daha ne çıkıyor diyor. Şimdi topladım. Bu biraz daha ne çıkıyor diyor. 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 Çünkü diğer evet. prezentörlerin ne, neyi anlattığını tam neyi burada dinlememiş olduğunda mukayesesini yapamayacaktır. O nedenle leadership konusunda neler vurgulayabilir bize tekrar bir onu soralım. Can you underline again the why a generation why confident in leadership role? Is this a cultural differences? We we assume that something in cultural differences, but maybe we're wrong. Can you clarify us how they are confident in leadership role in your reflect in your point of view? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thanks for your participation, Neil. Best regards from Turkey to you. Uh, thanks for your great effort and support to this organization. Yes, sure. I face within the classroom context this issue. Okay, thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you, Neil, for your participation and support to this seminar. <laughs> Do you want from me to speak your audience also? Okay, take care. Bye.